Good morning, Riverside. We say hey. Well, we'll say hey because it's Friday. It is Friday. It's Friday. Um, Patrick and I are here with Kevin Dawson. Um, give you a little background. Uh, Patrick and I started doing the weekly show. We said, hey, we need to start getting informed on what's going on in our city. That's one of the big reasons we're doing Hey Riverside. So we started going down to council meetings, some of the neighborhood meetings and stuff. And one of the people that we met early on and made friends with was Kevin. Because Kevin's at all these things. And, uh, well, you've been, you've been at all these things for a long time. Well, yes, I. It, it, you, you, than you, I have, you have been an activist. <laughs> How long have you been active in Riverside issues? Where, when I, when I really became active was when we finally bought a house, because as the great philosopher Pumbaa said in the Lion King, "Home is where your rump rests." And once we bought a house, our rump was resting here. Okay. And so I started paying attention to uh, what was going on in our community because I started to see that. Um, things happen, and if you if you don't gauge the process, they just run right over you. Uh, one of the first things that happened uh, was no sooner than we bought our house, then UCR was doing uh, a planning document called their 2005 Long-Term Development Plan, and in there was a lot of changes that they were counting on that would have a huge impact on my community. And this, we're actually in your community right yes, now. Yes, welcome yeah. to we my are, neighborhood. We are on location. <laughs> this is Big Springs Road that, that we're sitting right on Big Springs right Road. Right on the dead end. Islander Pool is right over here. Yes. Um, this is a city park. Um, behind us, we have the hills. We have the Box Springs County Mountain Park. Okay. It's on the other side of the railroad track back over here. And going up back this way, and you can't see because it's off camera, is the Box Springs Mountains where the big C. Big C is big up C here. Is okay. That uh, was uh, poured in place by uh, UCR students back in 1954. Wow. And it's been a big tradition for the campus to, uh, for people to be able to hike up to the sea. In fact, when I was an undergraduate, we'd actually had, uh, uh, in the spring, there was a week that was called Scott's Week. And there was a relay race that used to go right, from right. the uh, bell tower right up this road and up the very steep trail all the way up to the sea. Um, they haven't now, had Scott's Week in a long time. Now, but. Now, <laughs> now, now, we, we can't really do that anymore right now because the rail line now runs with Metrolink and they fenced that off. That's really, that's, I mean, that's a whole show right there. Um, what I want to get to is, is we have a city council election coming up. Um, the date is June. It's the first week of June. First it's week close, of June, but it's, but a, it's mail a mail in ballot. Yes. So ballots will be going out uh, in May. In May. And uh, so, first week of May. So this year we, we have some challengers. And we were, well, we were happy to find out Kevin is challenging. Yes, I am. In Ward 2. We're in Ward 2 right here. The, the incumbent councilman is Andy Melendres. Um, there's. Um, a third candidate running, John Harris. Yes. Uh, who is a pastor at um, Castle the, Rock Ministries. Castle Rock Ministries. Right. So, anyways, we we definitely, you know, we're trying to make time to talk to some of the challengers because those are the most interesting ones. Um, so, Kevin, this is the first time in all your years of activism in Riverside. And now, I, I should remind people that Kevin has been involved to the extent behind the scenes that he's been involved in some real big challenges to city government that have been successful that have that have changed you know affected our quality of life in Riverside for the positive so this is your first time running for council in all these years yes it is what what was your motivation this time well I've tried to um, as I've been going along over the last 12, 13 years, I've tried to, you know, follow city politics. I don't want to call it politics. The issues, uh, whether it be a development issue um, or, yes, some of the politics, and try to affect change. Mm -hmm. And I've done that around the edges. I've gone to, yes, city council meetings. I've met behind the scenes meeting with councilmen and discussing issues and then going to committee meetings and 
it's very difficult to get change. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Um, I've had some successes, I think. I can claim the successes, but they're not ones that people would be aware of necessarily. Right. There's, been, there's been two times where uh, councilmen tried to change the rules on how elections were held here in Riverside, and we were able to defeat those. Right. Um, and, and unless you really, I mean, you know, like you, like you said, a lot of this stuff happens behind the scenes. So many Riversiders, I mean, we have our lives, you know, we have our families, we have work, uh, you know, what little recreation we get on the weekend. It's very hard for a lot of people to follow city government closely. So that's, uh, you know. These, these meetings, a lot of times they occur during the day when people are working. Mm -hmm. And they don't have, and uh, back during the time when the council was not uh, recording these on videotape, um, you know, the, the meetings are very uh, low turnout. Nobody from the public really would go. Um, example was after, uh, in the election where Mike Gardner won, mm -hmm. the Government Affairs Committee had an emergency meeting. And what did they want to talk about? Well, they weren't happy with the way the election went. And they wanted to take away the conducting of city elections from the register of voters. And they wanted to use a private outside contractor. You're uh, kidding me. No joke. No joke. So they, so they, they is, wanted to privatize yes. our electoral process in the city. Right. And, and a private contractor would be more likely to bend to well, the yeah. pressure from the city, say, hey, how about fixing an election? Who's so paying this, you, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> then the second thing they wanted to do is they wanted to change how we elect council people. They wanted to make where we wouldn't elect people directly from a ward. We would nominate candidates from the ward, and then the, the ward election would be held citywide. And this was, uh, this was important because... We had uh, an incumbent who raised several hundred thousand dollars to run for re-election, and he just lost by three votes to a challenger that only raised forty-seven thousand. Oh my! So they wanted to rig it so that a guy could raise a lot of money could campaign over a whole city, but a challenger can't go door to door over the whole city. Right. Right. Yeah. So that was that was an attempt. That's weak. It didn't get <laughs> out of the committee. Thankfully, but I was there. I recorded that. I brought a video camera, set it down on the yeah. table, and they freaked out. They said, "Oh, <laughs> they said uh, one of the councilmen said, you know, uh, Frank, Frank, you know, he's got a video camera. Are we going to allow that?" And I sat there and said, "Well, look, it's a publicly noticed meeting. The Brown Act applies." And and the city attorney said, "Yes, he gets to keep it. He gets to be there." And I learned about taking a camera because I'd spent two years on the county election observer panel. Okay. So I was mm -hmm. going to, you know, uh, watch the different election events. I was on the panel to ensure the integrity of elections. And while on that panel, all these other panelists, they were bringing video cameras. Like, why are you doing that? They go, let us show you some video. And I'm convinced that video is our friend. It's important for it's uh, really important. absolutely yes, to document what's going on because if you don't have videotape, you have nothing. Well, absolutely. it's it's like you're saying. It's really hard to go down there every time. So I like going back and rewatching and being able to fast forward to the the, the good parts. You can't watch everything, so you know yes. you can spend three hours, but you can sure spend thirty minutes watching it. And I like doing that. Well, it's a welcome change. That the city finally uh, uh, has been, you know, videotaping the smaller uh, community or uh, committee meetings and making it available to the right. public. Yes. And right. it's good for the councilman because councilmen can't be on the other committees. Uh, you know, they, right. And it's good for them to be able to see, have the opportunities to look and see what's going, their fellow councilmen are doing if they want. You're right. Because you can't yeah. be everywhere at once. That's right. just the truth. And, um, you know, video is our friend to the point where um, I was at a council meeting uh, a couple years ago where uh, one of our community members was uh, applauding at oh, council meetings. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, that was uh, before they were doing the videotapes every week. Well, no, they were videotaping but the they council meeting. It. They weren't keeping it. Yeah. And so uh, I was watching yes. this play out, and I thought to myself, you know, I wonder if this is going to escalate. And uh, I decided, you know, I'm going to take out my phone because I've got a video camera. And I started videotaping, and sure enough, it escalated to the point where... Uh, the mayor uh, stopped the meeting, and they had the police arrest this person for clapping. Mm -hmm. You know, which mm -hmm. is you know First Amendment right kind of thing. <laughs> and I videotaped him right out to the squad car, putting this woman in in handcuffs into the car. Well, later, she brought suit against the city, and she won. Correct. Well, get this: uh, that they claimed that she was disruptive, and the judge said, "Well, you videotaped your meetings. Did you? Where's your videotape? Where's your proof?" And the city said. We don't have a judge. Well, what happened to it? Well, we destroyed it. 
you destroyed your evidence? Why would you destroy and your evidence? That's right. And she was like, well, we do have, I do have videotape. Ah. And she had the videotape I taken. Mm -hmm. And it's up on YouTube if anyone wants to watch it. And, you know, it's, that's, I, I'm sorry. Video, so there you go. Videotape, Vide 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 yeah. is important. Yes. Now, getting back to the election here, you are challenging an incumbent, Andy Melendres. Yes. He's been in since 2006. 11 and a half years. 11 and a half years. Uh, what's, what, what, why are you going to be a better councilman than Andy? Well, first off, um, I don't have the same conflicts of interest that Mr. Melendres has. He's invested in several properties downtown. And so anytime an issue comes before the council that has to do with the downtown area, he recuses himself. And I've been trying to go back to see how many times it happened. I've only looked to 2010, and in, two, in that amount of time, he's refused himself 59 times. Oh, whoa. and some of these were really big issues. Whoa. For example, the uh, the library issue, the library and discovery cube. The right. night that right. went to the council, you know, the council chambers were packed. We had a petition that was signed by uh, about 800 people. Uh, we had 80 speakers, most of whom said, "Don't move the library." And Mr. Melendres, he said, I'm sorry, I have to recuse myself. And he walked off the stage, and he's going out the door, and I chased after him. And I said, Andy, where are you going? You need to be in there with the people. Uh, and you could even speak from the podium. Use three minutes as a citizen to speak about it. He said, that's okay. I'm going up to my office. I'm just going to watch it. But this is an example of a problem. Right. That, that, you know, those 59 times he recused himself, that's 59 times Ward 2 wasn't represented on an issue. And we don't, you, the public doesn't know how Andy would have voted on the library issue because he wasn't there. He didn't share it. And I think that that's not right. Right. We need better uh, representation. And uh, I feel like as we even go along, I see this disconnect between the city and community. That uh, the Sycamore Canyon example that recently came before the council. There's uh, uh, there's the Sycamore Canyon uh, business uh, development, right? And uh, a developer went in and grabbed several properties, assembled them, and then proposed two monster warehouses. And we talked we talked to Alec Gary about this yes. uh, about a month and a half and ago, before before the last the vote that approved it. Right. But let me capsulize this. Um, the that community is a fairly affluent community, and, and it's very well educated, very articulate. They got, they did all the right things. They got organized early. They went to the different city groups. They went to outside groups and talked about the, their objections and the problem with this. And they get to the city council meeting. Again, it's packed. They have speakers Oops. there, and it was a done deal. Yeah. It was baked. It was. And, it was. And uh, it, it didn't was. matter how articulate they were and well reasoned and experts that they brought. It was a done deal. And if that community couldn't stop a bad project, there's not a community in the city that, if the right developer with the right amount of money was pushing it, that I think this council would just roll right over and prove it. We, well, we got to do that. We, it's for the good of the city. And I, and I, I have problems with that. Right. We live here. Right. We live here. And once those warehouses are built, it, they're going to have a life cycle that. It's just you can't uh, you can't unring that bell. No, no, you can't. And and it, and it really you know it comes down to what what we want Riverside to be if we want it to be a city of warehouse jobs or if we want to try a little harder and and, and well, bring in you know, something that's going to one you of know. The, one of the city's uh, buzz things uh, was seize our destiny. Right. Well, who's seizing it? <laughs> you know, the people who live here, or the, people, or the, the outside the, contractors, the, the developers, yeah. right. or the you know the business people that they you know. Um, I love going over to uh, Redlands, to the, uh, the Redlands Bowl, mm -hmm. and you know the Smiley Brothers uh, had donated that park and had this vision. They, you know, they donated the money for the Smiley Library, which is a beautiful library. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's the Redlands Bowl, and what a wonderful program! Free concerts oh, yeah. and, and whatnot. Yeah. Riverside, we should be doing that. We should. Yeah. But okay, so we're we're sitting there. You know, you're watching the Redlands Bowl, and around the lip of the bowl, there's this inscription. It's a biblical inscription, I think. It says, without a vision, a people fail. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. And I'm puzzled about that because I, I, I look at that, and, okay, well, whose vision? You know? But we if we need to have, here in Riverside, I think the communities need to have more say in, you know, what is their destiny right. in, in our communities. Right. Is it, is it fair for uh, the council to, you know, allow the development to come in and be, imposing their vision of our destiny 
or shouldn't there be some method of engagement for the communities to be able to engage ahead of time? And what right. I've been looking at right. is that uh, at different counties have a thing where they call it a, a CPAC or a, uh, in Riverside County they call it a MAC, Municipal um, uh, <laughs> you know, commission, Committee, and it's made up of people in the committee, uh, community, unincorporated areas for example, like mm -hmm. High Grove. They're where they have a panel, and they, they, it, it. This is where a developer will come to that group, hopefully, and say, okay, we, we, or we've got an idea for your community, or the community will say to county development, hey, we have a need that's not being met. Can you help this get it to our community? Right. We need something like that here in Riverside, and I've been meeting. Uh, you know, yes, I'm a member, board member of Friends of Riverside Hills. And I've been with, I like to work collaboratively with other people mm -hmm. and try to identify problems and work out solutions. Right. Whether it be, you know, the impact of the rail line here or I work with uh, Save Riverside uh, while that group was uh, in existence. Well, I've been meeting for the last two years with a group of community leaders uh, in, and we called ourselves the Neighborhood Brain Trust, which sounds pretty Really presumptuous, but mm. anyway, it, the idea was to start cross-talking with other community groups or neighborhood groups from around the city to uh, share, well, here's what's going on our side of the city. And we're finding that we have some of the same problems and, okay, what kind of solutions are, are being brought to it? How are we interacting with the city? And it's different. It, yeah. You go into different communities. Mm -hmm. You have Each a council. Is different completely. Well, the councilmen, they, they have a certain influence on that. You know, are they going to empower their communities to have a little bit of say in what goes on in their community? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to keep them broken up into tiny little groups, compartmentalized, so there's not crosstalk right. that's a problem. and sharing? Yeah. And that's a problem in War II, that, it, uh, that we have different community groups, but they're, they're not talking to each other. They don't well, know I, that. We have that problem in Ward 1 sometimes where there's a lot of little groups. And it's like, how do they all get together and talk to Well, I think Ward 2 Ward two is very unique because it, it covers, I mean, not only a, 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 very, a very diverse geographic area, yes. but uh, socioeconomic levels. This is a really um, important ward right here. I mean, no, no. I mean, you have the university up here, yes. the university neighborhood. You have Canyon Crest, but you also have the east side. Yes. Right. And 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 more more of an urban situation down there. Lower income, uh, more minorities. Do they still so, have the gang injunction so, down there too? I think the gang injunction is still in place. It's still in place. But, yeah. But anyways, it, 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 Ward Two has its unique challenges, definitely. Now, what I want it well. First of all, before we get too much further along, I want you to let people know where they can find out more about you. Yeah, we got to get you got to okay. find Kevin online. Yeah. All right, I do have a website. It's uh, Dawson for Ward Two dot com. Okay. Okay. And you can like me on Facebook. He's also on Facebook. Facebook. Same thing. You're also soliciting uh, endorsements. I'm looking for endorsements. I'm not. Uh, I'm not taking any PAC money. Uh, I. You know, it's been interesting yeah, after filing uh, paperwork. Uh, you know, people email you and they say, "Would you be interested?" in getting an endorsement and we have a pack and by the way here's a nine page uh, application to fill wow. out wow and, okay and it sort of gives you the gist of you know where's this group coming from yeah it's like one of them i was looking down there and there's how do you feel about CEQA, the california <laughs> environmental quality act mm -hmm. well um i like CEQA. yeah i think it's kind of weak you know i think that if there was a i don't well, <laughs> try to go into that right yeah. now but I think it's important. It's, it is one of the tools of where the community can have a say about development that is being proposed for. This is where you can raise. Here's what my concerns are, and they should, they should that developer or whatever they should have to mitigate those impacts. Right. right. Mitigate the impacts, and, and and that's important. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Riverside County Transportation, when they were going to do their Metrolink line, they were going to do a full EIR, and uh, I raised the issue over and over and over again that as part of this project, you need to mitigate the impact of how do we how do pedestrians safely cross over the rail line into the Box Springs Mountain Park to hike up to the sea? And they kept saying, the solution's easy. Those people shouldn't be there. They're trespassing. Ah. It's like, what? And, and, and in court, when we finally sued, they, they, their, their attorney argued for almost 45 minutes that those trails don't exist, Judge. They don't exist, and so we don't have to address it. 
Well, I wrote a letter to uh, RCTC, and my letter was uh, discussed at the meeting where they finally approved the project. And the com one of the commissioners said, I'm concerned about Mr. Dawson's letter, because in that letter I said, look, it's not a point if someone will get run over, it's just a point of time. And when somebody does get run over from your project, I will make it my mission to contact the family of that person and share that I have brought this issue, this danger, this public safety issue to you, and you failed to mitigate it. And so the board discussed my letter in those terms. And what they arrived at was this, and this is, this is what I want to get at. They said, well, there's nothing that says that if the community is so concerned about this issue that they couldn't raise the money themselves to build a bridge or an underpass. Oh, yes. And so they, then they said, okay, we'll approve the project. Well, excuse me. You know, it shouldn't be upon the community to mitigate the impact of their of RCTC's project upon our community. It should be RCTC mitigating that impact. Right, right. And the time to do it is when they got this big pot of money. And they had like $300 million that they're spending on this project. Mm -hmm. And it should have been there. Yeah. Now it's yeah. going to be very expensive to go back and retrofit an underpass or an overpass. It mm -hmm. should have been done as part of the project. And I resent that. Mm -hmm. And we you see know. that right up the street here. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Up the street here. And, it's, it, and, and it was after the project was vi uh, finished that they went in and they built a, uh, they built fencing, they spent, uh, they spent a lot of money on fencing, and they put in security cameras up there. And a lot of people don't know it, but they also uh, contracted with LA County sheriffs to patrol this line and cite anyone they find trespassing across the line. So if you're, if you're a hiker, and it's you Riverside find County, I know. No. This is, they contracted with LA, LA County, County Sheriff. Okay, and I know tons of people. How, how does that work? Oh yeah, how does that wait week? a minute? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Well, <laughs> MetroLink uh, operates all through LA County, and they already had a contract, but they extended the contract. And I've seen LA County Sheriff's patrol cars in our neighborhood. Oh boy. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, oh, it's, boy. it's, it's a mystery. <laughs> why why you do that? Why can't why didn't they contract with uh, local sheriffs that would be more in tune? But more to the point, you know the, the solution to a problem isn't to say, you're trespassing, shame on you, and we'll cite you. Right. It's to say, acknowledge that, you know, there are... Uh, There's use of it. People yes, well, to the point that, uh, you know, UCR, uh, which is, you know, a large group now. You know, we're at 22,500 students or, uh, at UCR, right. and that doesn't include faculty and staff. Right. Every year they have homecoming, and the first event of homecoming is what? A hike to the sea. Hike to the sea. It builds spirit. Yes. It ties people to the campus. I, I'm a UCR alum. Yeah. I should I should I should share that too. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I came to UCR in 1977 as an undergraduate. I, I met my wife in a U.S. history class in the middle of World War II. Uh, we dated in the comedy club. See how we other side is that? Yeah, that's, and, that's War II. Everyone. And War II. we yeah. we moved into the historic Canyon Crest married student housing on campus, which was right. built just before World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember as an undergraduate driving up to A and I because I lived in the dorm for two years, and I remember looking at that housing and saying, "Oh God, that's really ugly." I mean, who would want to live there? But you know what? I did. Yeah. And what a tremendous resource that was. Oh, sure. And, and, sure. and generations of faculty, the early mm -hmm. faculty members lived there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I, we lived there while we finished our uh, undergraduate degree, while my wife pursued a master's degree and a PhD and got a teaching credential. And she's been a teacher over in San Bernardino for 22 years. We're tied to this. Right. But, okay, so the very first event of, of uh, uh, homecoming was this traditional hike to the sea. And so guess what? RCTC uh, somehow figured out that that's an event. And, and uh, after the rail line opened, they sent a letter to the campus saying, "We've it's this, this event has come to our attention. And you shouldn't do that because oh. you would be trespassing. And we'll have sheriffs up there. We'll, we'll <laughs> cite everybody. Jeez. And so the campus Boo. had to take that off their list right. of activities. Right. Goodbye tradition. Yeah, goodbye tradition. Now, mm -hmm. that said, okay, so, uh, but that's, that's, the frustration. It's one of the right. many frustrations. Right. So, yes, we, Friends of Rosette Hills, we we sued over that pro uh, project, and you can sue over the, you make comments about the project, and you can only sue on the comments you make during the comment period. That's the way mm -hmm. SIPA works. And mm -hmm. we brought the suit, and we won in court on the pedestrian issue. We sued, I think, over 18 issues, one and five. There were several others we could have won on, but... I mean, this is wonky stuff. This is the way SQL works. Right. And 
then we decided, you know, this is a good project for the region. We don't want to stop it. It does have a lot of money and support, so we'll try to negotiate something. Right. And what we negotiated was the right to an easement, to put in a crossing, uh, some money to uh, acquire some of the private properties, just the side and then the other side, to fill in the blanks mm -hmm. between the city park and the county park. And we commissioned a master trail plan so that we, you know, we don't, you know, you don't want to build bridges to nowhere. So we wanted to have, mm -hmm. you know, connectivity and such. Right. And, you know, talk to the different stakeholders, get them to have buy-in. So, you know, uh, county and city park, county supervisor, city councilman, uh, city staff. We've had them in the room, you know, describing this legacy vision right, that we right. have to do something really good for the community. Because, you know, when we look at other parts of the city, like Mount Rubido and Sycamore Canyon Park, they're being loved to death. There's a huge demand for outdoor huge parks. Huge you know, demand in Riverside. Mountain bikers, mm -hmm. hikers, mm -hmm. and such. And I'm sure and, a lot of the students here would love to go hike up here. Oh, they, I see them every day. Now, now that it's fenced, they go up there, how do I get over to the other side? Yeah. You can't. And, and then but, here comes the L.A. County Sheriff. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Because but, they can't just hike in the botanical gardens all the time. That's that, the well, <laughs> no, even I, though I, I love the Botanic Gardens. Yes, yes, but these are things that I've been working on, uh, you know, like uh, getting an engineering uh, estimate as to what it would cost to do this uh, bridge or underpass so that when we go to the stakeholders, they don't just balk say, I don't want to sign on to something, I don't know what the cost is going right, to be. Right, right. So, okay, here's an estimate of cost. Now we can start talking about it. How could we, who can take responsibility, who can divvy it up mm -hmm. to move this forward? Um, so I've worked in the background and, you know, on this and so many other issues, but I, I just got to the point where, you know, that Sycamore Canyon and warehouse approval, it shouldn't have been like that. Right. Somebody should have been in, in there right. with the sharp elbows being the advocate for the people in that community. Correct. And I'm seeing a disconnect. Yes, Mr. Melendrez voted no, but his appointee to the Planning Commission voted yes. Uh, and you, yeah. if, if, if an issue gets to the council, mm -hmm. it's already pretty much a done deal. It's got right. enough momentum, it's going forward. Right. And there was other issues. Uh, this park here, on the other side of the park, there's another access point, And there was a family that lives right there, and they had a daycare facility and such. And they'd been included, the, the, the husband, he'd been including me on emails to uh, the city councilman. And they were becoming frustrated because there's a lot of... Uh, <coughs> illegal drug use and partying right next to their house where there's an access point for the park and there was trespassing in the park where there's illegal dumping and I look at it it's like why is this why is it why isn't anyone doing anything about this right. he's writing all these letters and they're getting angrier and angrier so finally I thought I'll take a stab at it and I I took and got a Google shot of the park and I was drawing on this map and and drew move boulders here, move the gate back here, put a street light here, all these things. And I sent this to Councilman Melendres and to the city manager and to the head of city parks. And I know these people because I've met them as being a board member of Friends of Riverside Hills. Right. To where look and and, and this was you know a thoughtful, you know, detailed plan address this problem. And I, I also copied other community members and the property owner, you know, adjacent property. Would you believe I got zero response from any city officials on that? Not even an acknowledgement that, thanks for putting together this thoughtful email, mm -hmm. we'll look at it. Zip. Zip. Okay. And so this property owner got, you know, angrier and angrier that nothing was being done. He finally, they moved. He showed up on the com uh, our community meetings just screaming at Councilman Melendrez. Man. And, and why? This is a simple thing. If nothing else, just move some boulders around. They finally, I came out here was moving boulders around myself. <laughs> and, and I go get, get small ones, but you know, uh, the boulders were already here from a previous load of boulders that were put in place years ago by yeah. a, a park ranger. But th if we can't get a city movement on fixing a simple problem, how can we fix the big problems? Right. Uh, this lack of responsiveness and engagement. Right. You know. Well, just listening to you right now, I, I realize look, look at all the stuff that's Kevin doing without being elected. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. so, so, elected, so, you know? what we're talking right. about here, folks, is is activism with action. I mean, not just making a noise about it, but actually, I mean, you know, Kevin Kevin's been taking action and, 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 doing, and doing stuff. doing real things that make a difference for years and years. So, if you're looking for someone in Ward Two who is going to be really on the side of the people and the residents and the people who have invested 
They're going to be here for the long term. I think you're going to want to look at Kevin as a candidate. Um, certainly, uh, I wish you were running in my ward. But it, oh. my, my ward's <laughs> well, not up you. for grabs right now. Yeah. But um, as uh, Patrick and I both, I think Patrick would agree, you know, as uh, uh, doing Hay Riverside, I mean, we're working hard to get more of this in front of a new audience um, we try, we put all city meetings, all committee meetings and everything on our Facebook page so people know when they are. We do a summary of what they'll be covering that day with links to the city pages where you can actually explore each issue, expand each issue. We really encourage you uh, as a resident of Riverside to get more involved if you can. Take some time. If, if it's only reading the city council, what's on the agenda, sometimes it's a little hard to get through, but you'll be surprised. You look at the planning commission agenda, you might find something going on in your neighborhood that you have no idea is going on. So if you go uh, out and speak up, you can make a difference. You have, you you have to speak up. speak up. Right. Kevin. Don't suffer in silence. Right. We, Use your voice. We appreciate, we appreciate your candidacy, that, that you've thrown your hat in the ring. Um, once again, the uh, website is Dawson for Ward. Two dot com. Or you're, like us on Facebook. You're also on Facebook. I'm not taking any PAC money. Small donations are good. We have yeah. a you know PayPal um, button on the uh, um, on the website. And you do have the lawn signs I've seen. I have some lawn signs, so if I can interest you in a lawn sign, please let me know. And um, even you know, even if I don't get elected, you know, I want to encourage people. You know, you can have an impact. Engage the system. Uh, pay attention to what's going on in your community. It's not good enough to gripe about it under your breath. Uh, you know, Michael Moore, uh, whether you like him or, or don't like him, you know, he's right in that if you don't like what's going on in your community, do something about it. Right. And in, right. in this instance, he said, if you don't like what's going on, run for office. And that's what I finally came to. I, I've worked around the edges in, in small venues and committee meetings, and I've joined groups, and I'm frustrated. I don't like what's been going on, and so I'm doing something about it by running for office. And even if I don't win, I'm not going away. I'm still going to be continuing to do what I've been doing. Excellent. Love that. And here we for like a, little, a little quick story before we cut out. We did Measure Z. We had uh, Paul and, uh, what was it? Uh, Jason. Jason. Paul and Jason, yeah. And Kevin just showed up out of the blue. He wanted to come in and listen. That's what's great about Kevin. I've seen him at so many meetings and listened to so many different people from different points of view. So. Highly recommend you uh, check him out and check out his website and well, vote for him. Thank Appreciate you so it. much for hanging out with us, Kevin. I know you know we want to get you on for some other shows. We have we have loads of issues going on Riverside. This is the guy that that is informed. And if like I said, I want I want a city council made up of people like Kevin who are informed in the community, who have been active in the community, and who know their neighbors, who know the people who are making decisions. And uh, yeah. I'm stoked. Thanks for the nice little setup here. This is all Kevin's doing. Yeah. So awesome. Well, it, it wasn't us today. <laughs> I mean, a great way to, to spend well, a Friday morning hanging out with, with, with a community member who's engaged, who's active. If, if you're checking this out, you're engaged, you're active too, and we thank you for well, tuning in. Well, I appreciate in. you coming to my neighborhood, allowing me to uh, share with you where I live and what some of the issues are in our corner of the city. I wish you the best of luck in the much. election, Kevin. I appreciate Kevin. it. And Thanks just for so much. And thank you, Pat, for Oh, coming. yeah, no problem. And we're going to do a quick pan so everybody can see where we're talking about over here. So right on down there. Yes, that's see, what we're talking about. See, to see it's kind of at a bleak angle from where we are. Yeah, I see but, sort of a bleak uh, there. But there it is, everybody, just in case so you saw what we were looking at. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Thank you.